to, to put everybody kind of in our uh, in our defensive staff room, you know, about five years ago, you know, we're, we're about this, we're about in this phase of, of the year about, you know, talking about our scheme and things that we wanted to be able to do. And uh, we really, we looked up on the board and we just, we had a bunch of uh, tags and words and stuff and we had a hard time, you know, grouping it and, and really making sense of the whole thing. So <clears throat> really to John Harbaugh's credit, he created a vision for, where he wanted us to go. But the problem we were facing in designing our pressure package here in Baltimore was it's kind of like the English language over the, over the course of the time, there's been so many great coaches and coordinators and uh, it's really this scheme had evolved, you know, over really a 20 year period. And uh, we had a lot of words that kind of meant one thing and didn't really connect to other things. So we wanted to streamline it. So really our, our, our problem that we had was, Hey, we got too much memorization here. We have too many, too many types of pressures that really should be grouped together. And, um, you know, we felt like every week it was just too much memorization on the guys, especially rookies, you know, new guys to the system, that sort of thing. And we felt like it was a lot of really path dependent on, uh, you know, on from week to week and the things we had done prior. So in order to move a line, it was like we had to change three words and totally reteach the thing. So I was like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, so how do we create a system that is flexible enough for us to evolve week to week? Uh, The guys can learn it and then shoot something that they enjoy learning. We can have some fun with and uh, really put some pressure on offenses. So that was that was the question we had back then. And, you know, the the next thing we looked at was, well, instead of let's think about our problem, let's think about, you know, what we want instead. So how do we make it likable? So. The best thing I can I can do to explain uh, how we built everything was really our system is built on concepts and it's like a it's like a slot machine, you know, so we're only really teaching certain things right here. If you can see, I'm going to do the uh, annotate deal like in this in this role right here. There's only so many things in this area of our scheme that we have to teach. Likewise here, likewise here. So really the first concept that we have to teach our guys is how we set the front and um, trying to get my annotate deal is how we set the front. So, you know, there's really only about four or five fronts that we carry in our scheme and those should be easy to learn, you know? So that's the first thing. The second thing that we start to teach our guys is, is, is patterns. So whoever's in the blitz, whether we're sending one guy, sending two guys, you know, sending even three guys off the ball, there's certain patterns that go that go with, you know, who's who's in charge of blitzing and that sort of thing. So, um, again, only so many things that you can fit in that wheel and then the guy should be able to learn. And then the third thing that we would pa- that we would package with that is is coverage that go with it. So you could see here each each kind of wheel in the in the uh, slot machine is one section that guys will learn. And then once you start to lay it together, that's how you create, you know, volume within within your defense. And then when you get really good and you kind of get to the graduate level stuff and the guys have a great feel for it, you can start adding different personnel packages and then you can add, and then guys within certain personnel packages can be doing different positions within, within the scheme. So the idea here is only, you're only teaching a finite amount of things to each, to each player, certain concepts. And then as you build, okay, your scheme and as you get more complex and and then people understand how to do those you know, certain concepts and certain techniques. Now you can start to really build a, you know, an all-inclusive package where, you know, you can change it from week to week. You don't feel like you're reinventing the wheel. So um, that's, that's the idea of how we, how we built this thing out over the last four or five years. Um, Call. All right. And that's pretty common throughout, throughout systems. But as you want to start to add sauce to what you do and and to kind of make it like kind of sweeter, you know, per se, is um, we want to add some sauce to it, but we don't want to add a lot of verbiage. So the first thing we start to do is we'll just pair this pressure and the coverage aspect. So every, every pressure is, is understood with a certain coverage rather than spinning different coverages that are applied to certain pressures. So for example, if I just called like a nickel, if, let's say, if I just said the world nail, that means it's nail fire zone and we're not playing any sort of other coverage behind it. And then that way you can eliminate that word. Then the third third thing we can do is that the second the second 
uh, signal that's in there will be the will be this the first signal is the front and the second signal is the pressure that includes the coverage now the front that's kind of a that'll be a loaded term so we actually denote certain types of fronts in our system that mean hey this is a third down front guys all right there's there's this is some sauce going on we we're trying to populate the line of scrimmage to add people and try to add confusion to offensive lines of protections and that's all we got to do is just say you know the word wide or load or rush and, and that'll click into the fellows that hey we're you know we're adding some people at the line here to try to make it try to make it more confusing on the offense and then the okay. last kind of dress it up and this is the last section is is how do you how do you incorporate uh disguises within what you're doing you know so you want to keep the, the picture moving on the quarterback and the offensive coordinator and so we would actually layer that with an extra disguise signal however you want to communicate that with the guys on the field so if anybody has any questions on how to do that, I can, I got ideas for you guys, but. Um, I have a question. Th- I have a question. Can you, could you talk about more about that? <laughs> well, so the disguising or the uh, signaling is a dang art in college now, because there's so much, there's so much uh, sign stealing and all this. Stuff. So whatever your system is, I would include that in, in, um, in how you get that signal to the guys. So you can be as creative as you want. Uh, could be something that people weren't expecting on the sideline. It could be a manager, uh, that guy stands right next to you and you can give him the signal as well. And then guys in the back end, they're, they're the only ones that have to look at it and worry about that signal where the, the guys up front, they don't care what, you know, this guys you're doing in the back end. So, um, but I want, I wanted just to, to click here <clears throat> into, into how we, we started to teach these things. So the way we did it, was we, we have a thing called pressure stations. So basically this is an OTA, this is in the spring, this is extra, extra time you got you know, with the guys. But as you build out your system and you start to kind of categorize the types of pressures that you want, this is, how we would, this is how we would rep it with the guys. And we just have four stations here and a coach at each station is just running one pressure, all the different ways with all the different fronts and you're applying and you're talking to the guys and you're going really slow about, hey, what, what are we doing here? And then how are we, <clears throat> what's everybody's rules? And then as you do get good at the drill and you start and you start guys getting a good feel for the your pressures that you're doing, then you can start to layer it with more with more fronts. You can start to change guys' positions and everyone starts to understand, okay, when we just say the word, I don't know, Brady, Favre, whatever your one word call is, and people understand what they're doing. Now you can understand, everyone knows what all the X's are doing. And now, and now you become more interchangeable as time goes on. So um, we can watch some of these here, but it, it, it's really simple. It's a, it's a, it's a however long minute period, but you, like down here, we're built, I'm giving them a front right now. I'm giving them a call. They got to get lined up to the formation. All right. Normally we'd have some sort of like dots here to indicate some sort of formation or some sort of motion. And you can get more complicated as you go and build it over time and make sure the guys are good on communication. And then, and then everybody understands what they're doing. So like right here, you know, we're making sure that everyone's applying their pressure rule based on the front and what we're calling. And then you can coach them up on the fly right there. And, and you're getting a ton of easy, cheap reps on the whole defense and everybody's getting reps and uh, you can build that out over time. Um, 